Hey guys, Mr. Myas is here. Ooh, I'm going to move this over. Sliding over. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about the ratio test. Now, the ratio test is, if you've been following here with Calculus BC, and we're talking about, or Calc 2, for those of you taking this in college, and we're talking about tests for convergence and divergence for sequences and series, then you know that we've been doing a lot of different tests, right? This is actually, I believe, our last test that we're going to use to test for convergence and divergence. So the ratio test is actually a good test to use when we have factorials um, or exponentials because factorials and exponentials both, when we look at the next term, they simplify out kind of nicely. Let me show what you let me show you what I mean here. So the ratio test is basically this: if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of the next term divided by the previous term, so the n plus one-th term divided by the nth term, if that limit is less than one, then our series is going to converge. However, if that limit is greater than one or equal to infinity, then the limit, the series is going to diverge. However, the ratio test, like other tests, is inconclusive, and this one is inconclusive if the limit is equal to one. So let's take a look at some examples, all right? And you'll see how these factorials and these exponentials can easily cancel out and help us do this limit okay so this is the ratio test this is called the ratio test and the reason it's the ratio is because i'm taking a ratio a sub n plus one divided by a sub n so let's take a look at, at some examples and i'll leave my ratio test up here while i do this first example the series n factorial over three to the n so i'm going to use the ratio test of the, for this one i have both a factorial and an exponential so I know I'm going to use the ratio test. So the ratio test, I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, the absolute value of that. All right, so a sub n plus 1 is going to be n plus 1 factorial over 3 to the n plus 1. And I'm going to divide that by 3 to the n over n factorial. So all I did notice is I, I did the, uh, the division, right? It's a fraction, so I just multiplied it by the reciprocal there, okay? All right, so notice here, watch this. This is, this is kind of neat, all right? This is, well, it's not neat. It's just, it, it kind of is, all right? It's nice to see this, okay? n plus 1 factorial is going to be n plus 1 times n factorial over 3 to the n plus 1 is 3 times 3 to the n this is why it works nicely with factorials and exponentials because 3 to the n boom n of the factorial boom and all I have now is n plus 1 over 3 and that is going to be infinity so the series that I had to begin with and factorial over 3 to the n diverges by the ratio test. All right. Okay, let's take a look at another one. 3 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n times n squared. So, you know, normally we might want to take a look and, and see, oh, this might be a... Uh, a geometric series but the problem is we have an n squared there so it's not a geometric series so we'll use the ratio test because we have exponentials so we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n plus 2 over 4 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 squared divided by so I'm really going to multiply 4 to the n, n squared, over 3 to the n plus 1. Okay, so 
That's going to give me the limit as n approaches infinity. Now what's going to happen? This 3 to the n plus 1 is going to cancel out with one of those. You know, I, I can, let, let me simplify this so that you can see it. 3 to the n plus 1 times 3. That's going to be 3 to the n plus 2, right? Over 4 to the n times 4. That's 4 to the n plus 1. n plus 1 squared times 4 to the n, n squared. Now you don't necessarily have to do that step. I just wanted to show you that step so you can see that algebra part. All right, so you know we can cancel these out. And we're going to be left with limit as n approaches infinity of 3n squared over 4 times n plus 1 squared. And we know that that's going to be equal to 3 fourths. Some of you are like, how is that equal to 3 fourths? Well, go back to your limits, right? n squared, n squared, n squared, right? It's just going to give me 3 fourths, okay? Now, 3 fourths is less than 1. So if we go back to our convergence, our ratio test says that if this limit is less than 1, then it's going to be converging. So, so we're going to say... The series converges by the ratio test. All right? Okay, let's take a look at a couple more here. Do I got time? Yeah, I got time. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the ratio test. We're going to have, um, oops, we're going to have square root of n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1, n minus 1 over root n, limit as n approaches infinity. Huh. What's going to happen here? Well, that's going to give me, let me go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We're going to have Uh, n minus 1 times root n plus 1 over n root n. And the highest power here of n is n to the 3 halves. Since since this is a square, square root here, square root here, n, n, um, this is going to be a limit of 1. So the limit is equal 1. So what does that tell us? Well, we go back to our, our ratio test inconclusive so inconclusive is never what we want but it's inconclusive so we got to do something else <clears throat> so let's go ahead this is an alternating series so we see an alternating series we're going to try the alternating series test so limit as n approaches infinity of square root n over n minus one and that is going to be zero Okay, how did I get zero? Well, this is uh, n to the one half power, right? And so uh, n to the one half power is going to grow. It's not going to grow as fast as the n here. So the bomb is going to grow faster. It's going to give me zero. So we also know that square root of n over n minus one decreases. So this is going to converge by the alternating series test. So, so if you had a little bit of confusion there, go back, check out the video on alternating series test, and hopefully that'll make that test there make more sense. All right, let's do this last one here. We've got some crazy uh, double factorial. You're like, what? Double factorial? Um, yes, double factorial. So what does a double factorial mean? Well, I've just written it out there. It's uh, 2n plus 1, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 3. So it's going to go by um, it's going to go by twos, right? And then the bottom is well, the bottom is the same as the bottom. So let's go and work this guy out. Okay, so I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the next of uh, a sub n plus 1. So a sub n plus 1, remember this is since we have a double factorial, we're going down by 2 each time, down by 2 each time. So here the next one is actually going to go up by 2. 
So we're going to have 2n plus 3 double factorial over 3 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial. And we're going to multiply it by 3 to the n, 2 to the n minus 1, n factorial over 2 to the n plus 1 double factorial. Wow. Fun with math, right, guys? Fun with math. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this bad boy here. Um, we're going to have the 3 to the n. Get rid of that. We're going to have, what else can we get rid of here? We can get rid of this. All right, get rid of the factorials. Sort of. We're going to have, notice here that we have We're also going to get rid of this factorial, have just the n plus 1 left. And so we're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 3 times 2n minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times n plus 1. And that limit is going to be, let's see, the biggest powers are 4n squared and 2n squared. So the limit is going to be equal to two-thirds. Two-thirds is less than one. And so since we have that, this is going to converge by the ratio test. Now, I know that some of you that are in my class are going, well, God, Mr. Myosis, is there going to be a double factorial on the AP exam? Um, I don't think so. I don't recall them putting double factorials. However, notice that in this problem, the double factorial was defined. So as long as we define, if, if, if we don't expect students to know what that is, we're going to define that in a problem. And if it's defined in a problem, you should be able to work with it if it's defined, if it's something new. So is it going to be an AP exam? You know, I don't think so. It was for this, this I mean, this problem is kind of a, a nifty little problem to do a, an exercise and, a, and a, an example of. But you should be aware that if we can use a, uh, a definition here for you to, to, to do the problem, you might do that, okay? So, there you go, guys. It's the ratio test. See ya.